Hi folks and welcome to our second All About Photography vlog. I'm here with Jesse and Jay. How are you lads? Good. Very good. That's good. And tell us about the week that was. What'd you get up to, Jay? Oh well, I had a bit of a virus over the weekend, so I spent about four days in bed. So I, I think didn't get you're to not do the much. only one. Bit of that going around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I did manage to get out last night and do a bit of photography, so we'll good. talk about that later on. Great. What about you, Jess? Well, I'm hoping I don't get sick. Um, we'll <laughs> see what happens. Yeah. Um, I ended up going to the complete camera control workshop for a little while on Saturday. Which that was a lot of really, fun, wasn't it? Real insight uh, cool. for me. It was good to see that. And also the portrait workshop last Thursday evening. So that was fantastic. Mm. Um, got some great knowledge and information from Rich, courtesy of those events. We've been having some great events just lately. And it's yeah. been a lot of fun. Yeah, truly. Mm, what about you? Oh, mate, yeah, yeah, a busy week of workshops, that's what it's been. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think we had about eight people at the portrait workshop and um, some really great creative photographers also on that uh, complete camera control. I noticed that our level of participant there is getting uh, slightly higher. It's no longer the um, the entry level uh, purchaser of a camera and actually yeah, gets right. quite some creative shots. Mm -hmm. But I thought I'll go through and I'll show you a little bit of video and everything of that later if you like. Jesse, I've got to say, mate, I'm just blown away. 20 subscribers to our brand new YouTube yes, channel. Yeah. That excites me. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm have to do the maths. We, we had three subscribers last week, so and I think that's a pretty good increase. Yeah, isn't yeah, What's yeah. the math? Someone yeah, will work that yeah, out. 600 We'll put it on the screen yeah. later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, mate. Um, okay, so there's been a couple of good things that have come out during the week. Graham Davis, thanks very much, Graham, for giving us the shout out regarding some um, neutral density filters. And in fact, uh, I jumped on the phone and our good friends at Adeal Photographic, Ryan Acorn, has sent us all of this lovely stuff during the week uh, from a Heidi of filters. These are really a, cl a first class glass filter. Um, what you're looking at there is over about a thousand dollars worth of filters. So um, that's gonna be really good. I'm gonna take that out into the field and give that a bit of an acid test and see how that comes along. What about you, Jess? Got a few different things to talk about this week. Um, so we recently did the Queensland folk Sean Cliff Pier meetup. Right. Um, all that photography played a big part in that. We provided Ted's gift voucher. Uh, Matt, his handle on Instagram is Mattimation. He took the Ted's gift voucher for fifty dollars. Great. And then Donna came home with our main prize, which was a gift hamper. And her username is pip underscore photography forty four. Okay. So you can find them those. on Instagram mm -hmm. um, and check them out. We've got our next meetup coming up at the end of next month. So we've got our monthly meetups through Queensland Folk and all of our photography is a big part of that at the moment. So really excited to see how that unfolds. This next meetup will be in Snapper Rocks. I can't reveal too much information. Um, we're actually going to be working with Oshot Mag. So cool. big shout out to you guys nice. for jumping in to help with that. Um, we're really excited to see where that meetup takes us. Uh, further to that, yeah, I'll be talking a bit about my experience going to the workshops that sure. Rich was part of in the last couple of days, which was awesome. Heather from Gimpy also wanted to know about the difference between Pinterest and Instagram. Mm, good, good. Um, so we can go into a bit more detail about that as well. Sure, sure, all right. Mate, um, I'd love to see your time lapse. I know you haven't been well, <laughs> but at least you got out there and you made an effort. Can we have a look? Yeah, well, uh, I'll just bring it up here, but uh, while I've been cook, I've been laying in bed pretty much for four days and watching YouTube and stuff and I stumbled upon um, a YouTuber that goes by the name of Peter McKinnon, he's a photographer, doing the same sort of stuff we're doing I guess, um, young fella. Anyway, he uh, one of his blogs was about uh, time-lapse photography. I watched it and it was more about not doing the actual time-lapse itself but the, the processing of it. Mm. I've got to admit, I, and I'm I, really I watched it and I went well, I've got to go and do another time. I've done time lapses before, but I've got to go and do one so that I can try this processing. So this setup is, this is a new method to what you've ever done before. Yeah, I've never done much, any much of them. easier through Adobe Premiere Pro. Right. So much faster than what I've been doing in Photoshop and so forth, trying to get a time lapse together. Way easier. Uh, so are we going so to do a, a little bit of a how-to video on that? Yeah, we'll put yeah. A link, well, the a, link below if you want to check out that process that we've yeah, used. Yeah, we'll make up used. a little video, little video. I did some um, blogging while I was doing the time lapse, um, but I'll run through all the settings and everything, all the trouble I went to, what lens I used, all that sort of gear, doing the shot, um, and then how the post processing setup works. So I'll bring this up. This will play through on the on the video. Sure. But, uh, 
What sort of time of day? What's the start time on that? Uh, start about quarter past four. Okay. Yeah, quarter past four. Sunset was 5.25, so it's run for you know, an hour and a quarter sort of thing before the sun has actually set, then ran for another half an hour after the sun had set. Gosh, that uh, looks great. Now the clouds have come in. Gosh, that looks terrific. 700 photographs, eight seconds apart. Is that right? Yep. So, um, Glasshouse Mountains in the background. One, Gosh, one thing wonderful. I did notice while... I, I, you know on your camera where it says how many shots are available mm. to, to, to fill the memory card? Yeah. Well, when I... Because um, it's like 36 megapixel... Um, I was shooting raw and JPEG on two separate cards, but it was started at 795, and I wanted to take 800 photos. I thought, oh well, if it runs out before the end. Yeah. But as it was shooting, I kept periodically checking in the thing and checking against my time, thinking, well, I've been here for an hour already, and it's only taken 200 photos because there's still 600 photos mm -hmm. left to go. Mm -hmm. That number is not right. <laughs> when it said 795. I could probably fit 1,200 photos on there as, yeah, it, yeah, as yeah. it was taking each exposure. I guess it compresses them slightly. Well, it also, it's only an indication because every image that you take is a different file size. Have you ever noticed that? Some of them are different megabytes than that. others. Yeah, right. So it really is just a mean average of approximately how many you yeah, yeah, have okay. left, depending on how much details in each image. I've also see. noticed that on my Micro Four Thirds camera by Olympus, uh, in the recent past, I've gotten right down to the last sort of five images, and it, it literally will shuffle around depending on what you're doing, whether you're filming or taking yeah. long pictures that are long exposures or yeah, like a yeah, simple yeah, shot yeah. in yeah. bright light. Oh, of course, yeah. it is a mean yeah. average for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it really had me concerned. That's all. I was sort of like, you know, an hour in there thinking, gee, my sums are wrong. I must, I've only <laughs> taken, you know, I've worked out I've taken 200 photos because it only counted down 200, and I'm thinking. It's not going to make a very long time lapse, and I'm going to have to stay here for another hour. But yeah, right. Um, I've recalculated. It what what size? What there. size card were you using to do that? <coughs> 64 gigabyte. Oh yeah. So yeah. you had another 64 gigabyte, hey? Yeah. Do you want to tell everyone what happened to your other 64 gigabyte? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, after the last last blog, we uh, Rich and I made a video of the drones, <laughs> which we'll put up later on. Um, what about how stable lights? these are in the air yeah. anyway we filmed it on uh, the camera also did a bit of filming on this the Olympus tracker camera and uh, when I went home I, I took the memory card out and put it on my kitchen bench of course and I was sitting there over the weekend in a comatose state watching and then <laughs> I've discovered that the dogs chewed up the little card the, S, the micro SD card adapter that to an SD uh, chewed that up with a 64 gig micro SD. A horrible so, thought yeah. to say yeah. the So I always <laughs> wanted to tell my teacher that don't take my homework. It really did this time. So I lost quite a bit of video footage, but yeah. anyway. Nevertheless, my dog's a whole lot, got a whole lot more memory. Yeah. Than 64 yeah. gig. Teaches some more tricks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very cool. Yeah, but mate, right. um, great work on that simple little time lapse. I'll be very interested yeah. to have a look at the video of that. Yeah, it was tricky, um, tricky thing to do. Like um, what I did was set up, like I said, pretty much broad daylight, quarter past four, and then as the sun went down, it's got progressively darker and darker. And I was a bit concerned that I actually had to ring Rich and hit him up too, what what mode I should mm. shoot it in, mm. uh, just to keep the exposure right. So uh, we'll show you what we did there and why we did it, but I, I'm still not totally happy with how the exposure came out in the end. Like, no, it's, it's, a, it's a learning way. curve, mate. Yeah. It's a learning curve for yeah. sure. Okay, yeah, great. All right, and uh, I guess the other thing that we should make reference to is uh, in the description of the video below is going to be a little bit more information on some drone, um, some creative drone shooting. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we're going to talk about some of the Mavic Pro's advanced features there, such as follow focus, yeah. oscillate. Oscillate, that sort of thing, just some basic things. With so it, if, so. You, if you do have a drone, folks, and you just want to get a, a little bit better at the skills of that short filmmaking, and it certainly does, I've noticed a huge difference to the short videos that we make. Just to get that airborne perspective, it is really magic. It makes it so much more watchable. Okay, so we'll, we'll watch out for that in the links yeah. below. Hey? Okay, great. Mate, um, let's just uh, quickly talk about Ben Connolly. We've got a workshop tomorrow for Ben Connolly at the university. Um, now, that should be a very good uh, event. This is the young Ben Connolly is now perhaps one of the Sunshine Coast's most awarded uh, photographers, wedding photographers. I think a total of nine international awards and some uh, AIPP, Australian Institute of Photography Awards as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we'll uh, put a little bit of a, a video together on him and we'll film that event for him as well. So check that out. Ooh. 
All right, Jesse, what do you got for us, mate? Uh, well, I've got some images that I've been plugging into my social media. So um, take a look at the first one. There's actually two friends of mine um, looking up at... So Alex is on the left, yeah. and he's holding up his hand, and this is kind of one of those shots you'll often see on Instagram, kind of people using their hands and actually holding, and well, yeah, yeah, holding yeah. a product or just kind of keeping it personal by showing themselves. Yeah. And my mate Bryce on the right actually um, trying to get the shot. Um, so they're actually both on Instagram if you want to check them out. Visuals by Alex, I think it is. He's recently changed and rebranded himself and Art of Bryce. Mm -hmm. uh, both amazing guys. I definitely recommend seeing what they're doing on Instagram. And I, yeah, that was when I was living in Vancouver. So yeah, I spent time over there. And interestingly enough, that's actually where I started really investing a lot of my time into building my Instagram page. Um, I think we talked about that last week. I'm the wild traveler on Instagram. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that's just a shot I took of them one day we were all out shooting in one of the outer regions of the city. So Jesse, yeah. when you're saying that they're putting their hands into that image, is, is this maybe where we're going from selfies just to get away from that big cheesy grin yeah, of a selfie? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I think, I think um, it's a bit, a bit nice, a bit classier yeah, than the, the, the selfie style. Yeah, there's a yeah, massive really oversaturation of <laughs> selfies on yeah. the internet at the moment. And I sure. think, you know, especially as an artist, artistic photographer mm. a lot of us are kind of looking more at the self-portrait end and yeah, sure. finding a more unique way to display ourselves that's not just kind of mm. you know your face in front of the camera not yeah, that there's anything sure. wrong with yeah, that it no, works yeah. for some people if you're a selfie addict you keep at it we yeah. love watching them <laughs> yeah. no, judgment. <laughs> no judgment no yeah. judgment um, okay yeah, what's the so next one there that's um that's one image i've got a couple more black and white images um these are actually i think i mentioned the three most recent shots that i've posted uh, the second image is uh, another fellow. Uh, I don't think he's actually on Instagram at the moment. He's kind of, kind of, I think, been having his own journey, kind of deciding whether he wants to have that social media presence or not. But um, as you can see, this is kind of a, a sort of a, a strong angle looking up, mm -hmm. sort of like a look up shot at the buildings. Mm -hmm. But he's in in frame there, doing the peace sign with his fingers. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I don't know, something about this shot really resonates quite yeah. strongly with me. No, um, it's the silhouette of him. You know, yeah, you yeah. See. The yeah, it makes it anonymous. Strange, but yeah. it, it, I don't know. I feel yeah. like it works quite strongly, and definitely I prefer it in black and white. Really. Yeah, sure. Got a real punch to it. Ooh, so, like the it. final image I've got there is um, it's actually a really popular parquet in Vancouver. Um, a lot of people, if you're watching from Vancouver, you'll it's the circular one. I've got other photos in my feed quite recent too, looking up, um, maybe we can plug that in when mm -hmm. we sure. publish it at the end of the week. But these are two other friends of mine. So um, DJ underscore quickie on the left, Braden and Isaac, Isaac Ray on the right. Uh, both young guys over in Vancouver also doing a great job on the social media. Mm. And yeah, big shout out to everyone over there. Uh, I mm. really love my memories of Vancouver and it's a good place to be for photography. There's a lot of different stuff to shoot in the city and Nature abounds pretty sure, much on sure, the footsteps sure. of that city too. You know, is that, I just haven't uh, seen a lot of silhouettes lately. Uh, they, they were sort of a, a very popular way of capturing, you know, it was a particular way, but I haven't seen a lot of silhouettes lately. Maybe we should reintroduce the silhouette, bring back the silhouette. Definitely. Yeah, mm. well, that's uh, interestingly enough, that's kind of one of my focuses. I love that kind of contrast. Mm. Um, whether it's the natural contrast through like, you know, negative space of white light in the kind of horizon or whatever, and then mm. a person mm. sort of breaking that space up. Mm. Um, but I've really tried to utilize that in all three of these images, which mm. is why I wanted to have them in black and white. So Great job. folks, if you enjoy your black and white, get out there. There's so many ways you can be creative with that. Mm. One of the uh, Instagram accounts that I've been watching lately is um, black and white legit. Have you seen that one? I think I've heard of it. Mm, I might have to jump on and check it out. Some beautiful stuff. Some, some beautiful stuff. Yeah. All right, Jess, what else you got here? You got uh, so Mooloola Bar? Yeah, there's a couple of uh, landscapes in Mooloola Bar. So that was actually right before the portrait workshop last week. Okay, um, cool. I had a bit of extra time on my hands, so I thought I'm going to head down to the beachfront and just see what's happening. And the weather that day was pretty interesting. Um, if you look, the first image I've got shows a wave breaking on the left, and then out to the far right, there's actually... You can see the rain, rain kind of bellowing down, down yeah. over mm. Kiwana, mm. Um, up the other end. And uh, just the contrast in that, that natural contrast that you often get in an image, this is actually completely unedited, by the way. Um, and a big focus for me is sometimes I really like to just document the scene sure. that's in front of me. I don't yeah, really yeah. want to yeah. change it at all, except for what the camera's doing. What device? 
This is just my iPhone. iPhone. Um, I did have my Olympus camera for the workshop, so mm -hmm. I think I took some images on there. Um, I need to start exploring that more and getting the Olympus images online. But uh, yeah, so this is just my iPhone. Um, important to emphasize the power and strength of the mobile photography. Mm. Mm. It's really underutilized a lot these days, but it is becoming very popular. So and keep I, that in mind, folks. I, I really like this uh, street scene also. What's that one there? That must be in Vancouver Oh, so that's, as well. yes, the, that's... Um, the that cut and one shut with the truck. Van. Yeah, so that's an <laughs> old photo when I was in Seattle. Um, and this is actually a film shot, uh, 35 millimeter, yep. color photo. Oh, okay, nice. And um, I've got a couple more of them we could have a brief look at. But yeah, this one, uh, just another sort of documentative scene. No editing done, it's just yeah. what you see, how it was scanned by the people that I took the role into. And yeah, I really kind of want to emphasize that, you know, don't feel like you have to edit your photos. It's, a, it's an important thing. Like if you want to show that authentic picture of mm. what you were seeing at that moment, mm. don't be yeah. scared to yeah. do so. You know, I think we're, we're in a world now where there's all this kind of pressure to kind of show a certain image. Sure. But, you know, it's important to also establish what you want to do for yourself. by yeah. being creative in your own yeah. way. Okay. Yeah, that shot's uh, about contrast, isn't it? Look at the whole rest of the scene is, uh, you know, dull, muted tones, the weather, yeah. everything. Yeah. People wearing coats and, or something. I, and I do actually remember brightly that. coloured van. Yeah, yeah. and I, I really remember kind of trying to emphasise that in the image. So it's worked, you know, and sure. that's it's yeah. an easy thing to do. It's easier than you think. It's the elephant in the room. So yeah. Speak, yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 All right, I like it. Um, I don't mind that bit of architectural type shot there too with the plane, Jesse. Yes. That's a yes. shot, um, another film shot, black yes, and can, white. You can't just see the lovely grain in that. That's typical of a film. That must be about an 800 speed film, something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd have to check on that mm -hmm. one. But yeah, that one, I'm pretty sure from memory that was a shot I took in Sydney. Um, back when I was first uh, back in Australia a couple of years ago and um, just really interested in learning more about the film photography. And mm. I, that passion's been reignited in the last couple of months. So I'm very eager to get back on the road and you know fill up those rolls of film and... Be mindful of my money, of course, because it can, can, yeah, can run away. You back. can <laughs> run away. Yeah, sure. So. All right. So, uh, lads, let me uh, just share with you, if you don't mind, uh, the video from Saturday. Uh, you know, gosh, we've been doing these workshops here on the Sunshine Coast, not for months, but for years on a monthly basis, right? And gosh, we can't always get a beautiful sunset to cap off the, that workshop. But we were absolutely blessed on Saturday. Um, it was terrific. You can see a little bit of the vision here. Uh, what you're looking at is the girls practicing some silhouette techniques just while we're waiting for the golden hour. Uh, and also uh, some, some lovely um, or slow moving creative exposures as well. Uh, I have noticed that the quality of participant that we're getting on these workshops is really starting to uh, to, to come ahead. Mm. Uh, in fact, I had a, a local artist, uh, Sue Haddenham, and uh, let's just have a quick look at her, uh, her uh, watercolours here. They are absolutely beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. So I, I had the cool. pleasure of being able to photograph those for Sue during the week. Uh, and she was actually one of the participants on the workshop. So just drop down there to the Sue JPEG. That's uh, the the panoramic shot that she's taken there. So I don't think it's going Lots, to be too yeah. far behind. You know, yeah. uh, she's going yeah. to be able to start using this camera to start to capture some great reference work for her art. So, uh, you know, lots of different people using photography for a lot of different reasons. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, there's a shot that I just did there at the sandbags, a little bit of creative slow-moving shutter speed. I uh, love the way that the clouds are just off there on the horizon. So they gave that image some nice depth. And... The ball of water shot. The ball of water shot. <laughs> They're always good. Uh, yeah, look, always good. But gosh, I'd say that's got to be, you know, a, 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 um, in the top, you know, top 10, I reckon, that I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, th this is a exercise that we do with the participants that involves a water balloon. And of course, if you've ever popped a water balloon, to actually see that ball of water still staying there, like stayed in animation, you just don't see it with your own two eyes. So this whole uh, workshop exercise is based around just learning is exactly what is the stopping power of one one thousandth of a second. 
And you can see that the results are quite spectacular there. Mm. So, uh, Jess, before I close off, mate, do you mind if I ask you a bit of advice? It's got to do with the social media. So there's obviously Sue that was at the workshop, but there's also some other ladies. I'd like to be able to tag them or make sure that they can get to see that I put some of their photos up on our Facebook. So what should I be doing? Should I be hashtagging them? How do I make sure? So there's a couple of options you've got. Um, With the YouTube videos, you can often just link it in the description. So there's a description area when you've got the video there on the YouTube page, Mm -hmm. you can often link it in the description. Uh, We tend to be showing you the pictures on screen while we're still talking. Um, And we have the ability in doing that to show you the picture. And in the bottom corner, we can actually have a little username or handle there. So find Sue on Instagram via Uh, this page. Cool. Um, So it really depends on how you want to go about it. Um, Everyone's got a different approach. Um, We'll probably have a chat about that over the coming days before we publish it at the end of the week. Okay. And, um, yeah, it's kind of up to you how you want to go about it. Just whatever feels like it, it's coming naturally. Um, yeah, yeah. And as I say, we'll, we'll go through that and figure out the best option for us. But yeah, Perfect. you know, experiment with that yourself. Um, there's so many different ways you can be effective with it. Great. Okay, Jesse, well, I can keep an eye out for that one. And um, Jay, you did have a question for Jesse from Heather. Yeah, yes. yeah. Heather that I uh, did a tuition with in Gippy. Uh, she was. Hello, Heather. Yeah, <laughs> Heather. Hi, Heather. Uh, she belongs to the camera group up that way, and uh, they asked it to and all their members to share their pictures with the camera club. Yes. Through Pinterest, and when she said that, I thought that's an odd way to be sharing. Yeah. Folio pictures. So we were talking about that the other day, and I, I did some research online, and what I discovered was that Pinterest is more. It's more about curating overall. So. To my understanding, from my experience with Pinterest, you go on there, you can create boards of your own. So they're personalized, customized boards that you've invested in. And for example, I have a bodyboarding one, which is all my bodyboarding content. I'm very passionate about that. I used to do it a lot when I was younger. I have my photography one. It's very photography centric. So it might be actual photographs, but it's also photographic information. So like, you know, an aperture of 2.8 and how that corresponds with say F11. Um, and you have all your information in each board, depending on the category that you're discussing and talking about. You okay. can post photos on Pinterest, but when you put it alongside Instagram, for example, there's not as much control. There just isn't as much control as what you have on Instagram. Instagram is basically, you have a gallery that you create, curate and you can post photos literally whenever you want. I probably wouldn't advise posting 50 in one day. People that follow you might get a bit overwhelmed by that. <laughs> right. But um, at the end of the day, you have all the control there and you use hashtags to your advantage to kind of spread those images through the online Instagram community and get a lot of exposure. So they are very different in that sense. Well, I guess then for a camera club, that does make sense. If they're creating a board, that might be a black and white board or a streetscape exactly. board or something. That probably makes sense, Heather. So, um, yeah. yeah, I just thought that like that, like if you said a black and white board, it's not only their photos, it's everyone from around the world mm, putting things in that black and white board. If you, yeah. sure. you know, like if I've on Pinterest look photography, if I choose to have one of my boards as photography, Everything, everything photography related comes to that. Exactly. Whether it's infographics, photographs, all that sort of stuff. So um, I just thought it was a bit odd that she, they were doing it that way. I felt yeah. Instagram was a much better, but yeah. she was a bit scared of Instagram. You know what we should reasons, do? We probably so. should do a shout out to that club. I think it's the Gimpy Camera Club. I'll stand corrected if it's not, but we'll, we might we'll, yeah. we'll send a shout out to the club and maybe get them to fill us in and uh, find out how they're using it. Yeah, might yeah. Be a good we can update you on that if we mm. find yeah. some new information, mm. definitely. Okay, terrific, terrific. Okay. Um, uh, don't forget uh, Graham, Graham Davis. Uh, I'm going to do a separate video on the Heidi filter range. You'll find the description down below. We'll have a link in it for that. Jay, we've got some drone footage, yeah, some, yeah, uh, drone footage there. some advanced filming techniques yep. uh, for the Mavic Pro. And don't forget, Jesse, 18th of... 28th of May. Sorry, 28th of no, May. That's right, so it's a monthly instance. Uh, that one will be down on the Gold Coast, Oh, shop mag, big shout out to you guys. I'm so happy Hi with guys. everything you've done. You've done some great stuff for me too. We're all going to be doing that together. Yeah. That announcement will be coming out, I think, by the time this video is published. Awesome. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be massive, and we're really excited for that event. Yeah, so. great to be involved. Yeah. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Terrific. Yeah. Bye. See ya.